Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the control board that I'm going to be using for the Formbot upgrade build and also we're going to take a look at SPI and UART because when working with the control board and doing part of the upgrades that I've been working on, these two things were highly confusing for me and I sort of hope that they are for you too because otherwise I feel stupid, but <laughs> these are quite kind of difficult things to get your head around. They get mentioned quite a lot when it comes to advanced 3D printing things, so I was just like, what the hell are they? I want to know, so I found out. I did lots of research about what works, what doesn't, what they are, what they're not, what's better, what's worse, and today I'm going to be sharing that information with you. So to get you caught up with where we are on the project, we are upgrading the Formbot because the safety was pretty bad and the print quality was not fantastic. So we're doing a bunch of things to get it back up to spec to be something that we would actually want to use. We started off with a disassembly, taking everything apart, removing the bits that we don't want and chucking a lot of stuff away. Then we did a repair on the x-axis. It had a lot of damage and we fixed that and that's all nice. Then we upgraded the Hemira, so we did some CAD design to create a bracket to mount that E3D Hemira on the carriage. And we also upgraded to a high performance aluminium heated silicon and removable surface type of bed. So if you want to catch up with previous videos in the project then you can check the playlist which will be linked below. But today we're going to be taking a look at the control board, doing a quick overview of some of the features that it has, and then focusing in on UART and SPI. What the hell are they? Why do we need them? How do you choose which one you're using? So the control board we're going to be using for this project is the Big Tree Tech GTR version 1.0. It's quite a monster of a control board and also has an additional expansion board to add loads of motors, fan headers and stuff like that. For my specific implementation here, I really don't need that expansion board. It's a little bit much for my needs. So I'm going to be ignoring that for the most part. But if you do want to add it, it is there and it has a lot of capability as well. I should mention that I didn't actually select this board. I asked BQ for a control board which they would like to send me to work in this upgrade project and they sent their basically biggest baddest control board as far as I can tell which is very cool it's a very capable board but if, if it seems a little overkill and then yeah it probably is a little bit overkill but it is very cool so we're going to take a look at some of the features it's capable of. So firstly you have three power inputs this might sound weird but it basically means you can have a power input purely for the bed one for the control board and one for the motors. So if you want to run them at different voltages or you can't obtain power supplies in high enough voltages to power the bed, for example, you can separate these into three separate power inputs. So you could use three separate power supplies if that's something you want to do. You don't have to use multiple power supplies. You can just kind of link them all together. And in my case, as we looked at in the last episode, I'm gonna be using an SSR. So while I do have to supply power to the bed input, it doesn't have to be a lot. It's a very low current just to trigger an SSR, but this sort of multiple in power input feature is potentially useful for some implementations. It also has capability for Wi-Fi, near pixels, and BL touch, so all headers pre basically placed in on the board, nicely positioned and labeled for you to use. So if you want to do that upgrade, it's very easy. They obviously do require additions like an add-in Wi-Fi board, the actual LEDs themselves, and a BL touch. They don't come with it but it has the capability to add those if that's something you want. Of course, it has USB and micro SD card capability. The USB port can be used in either a kind of USB storage way or a interface to a computer kind of way. So again, lots of options, which is really good to see from a high-end control board. It has a Raspberry Pi input. So while some soldering is required to add the header, there are basically the whole array of pins that you need to add a Raspberry Pi. So blimey, you can actually do like Octoprint, just on top of the board, fantastic. Thermocouple and TFT interface are also available. TFT interface gives you touch screen and things like that. Whereas thermocouple is great for really high temperature applications. They're just a little bit, thermocouples tend to be a little bit more accurate at extremely high temperatures than your standard uh, thermistors. And then last but not least, although not really last because there are other things, it can do I squared C, CAN communication, UR and SPI. So what are all of these things and um, what do they all mean? What are they for? And why are we going to focus on UART and SPR? So let's get stuck into that. So 
All four of these things are types of communication. If you want to take one digital thing and another digital thing and you need to talk between them, these four interfaces, I2C, CAN, UART and SPI, are methods for doing that. Today we're going to focus on UART and SPI. They get mentioned quite a lot in terms of advanced features and stepper drivers, but what the hell are they? Are they just features you turn on and off? Do they do things? Does it matter which you have? We're going to answer all those questions so you know for 3D printers whether UART or SPI is important. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter, whereas SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. Why are they important on 3D printers? Because they communicate between the control chip, like the main chip on the board, and the stepper drivers. What are they? Well, they're serial interfaces. So serial means they send bits, like one digit, one at a time, down a line to the other end, where they received one at a time, reconstructed, and then executed. The important thing about UART and SPI is that they allow for communication in both directions. Having two-way communication means that the stepper driver can also talk back to the controller itself. You might be starting to see where this is going. One of the key differences between UART and SPI is that UART is a one-to-one -one interaction. So it's like me saying to you, walk over there and then walk back to here. That's just me talking directly to you. Whereas an SPI is one to many, but it also is to one. So for SPI, it's more like me shouting to everyone, go and walk over there, but I'm pointing at you. So you know that you're the one that needs to do that, but everyone can hear it. To wind them up, SPI uses four pins plus one for additional chip, whereas for UART, it uses three pins plus two for each additional chip. So with UART, they're using a transmission, receive, and ground. But because it's one-to-one, -one, you have to have a new transmission and receive for every single chip. Whereas the ground can be common between all of them because it's just a reference voltage, so they're all communicating at roughly the same voltage. So SPI uses a clock pin, MOSI, MISO, and CS. So the clock is the timing signal, so that the two chips know what the timing is between them. MISO is master in, slave out, so that's an input for the master, output for the slave. MOSI is master output, slave input, so the opposite. And then your CS is your chip select. So those three first pins, the clock, MISO, and MOSI, are connected to all of the chips that are being talked to. That's why it's shouting. It's sending the same signal out across those wires, and in theory, all of those chips would receive that signal. But the final pin, the chip select, identifies which one of those chips actually needs that signal, which ones are actually targeted for, which one needs to respond. One advantage of SPI is that you can transmit data much faster, and you can also do it using less power. Whereas with UART, the advantage is there, either you can transmit that data across a much longer distance, like many meters instead of a few centimeters, and you can have an acknowledge pin. So you can verify that that data has been received correctly by using that additional pin for each of the chips that you're communicating with. However, while looking specifically at 3D printers, the data rate at the moment with current applications really isn't relevant. We're not transmitting that much data, so high data rates, not really that necessary. The distances that we're talking about, we only need to do it the, the, the length of a control board. That's not in the region of meters, so Again, range, not much an advantage. Acknowledgement can be useful in some applications, but whether not highly mission critical or life critical, missing a very short communication message is not going to be the end of the world, and you get very high reliability in the data transmission anyway, so again, not really needed. So then, really, for 3D printers, either is fine. But then which one do you use? If they're both okay, which one is the right one? Well, what determines whether you use UART or SPI is typically the stepper driver. Stepper driver will typically use UART or it will use SPI, whereas many control boards, like the Big Tree Tech GTR, have implementations for both. So when you're choosing your stepper drivers, choose them based on the current they can output and what features they have. And then just you'll end up with whatever serial interface that they chose to use, whether it be UART or SPI. From there, take a look at the control board and make sure that the, whether it uses UART or SPI, matches that of the stepper driver. If you need to change your stepper driver specification to match your control board, then do it that way around. But either way, the serial communication interface that it uses is not critical. The other parameters of the stepper driver and motherboard or main board are. So really, for 3D printers, either is going to be fine. 
If your stepper drivers only use one or the other, make sure you know what that is and implement it that way. If you do get the option to use both for some miracle reason that your stepper driver can use either, then just use whichever is easiest for you to implement. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that's been useful, especially if you're looking at upgrading control boards and drivers and coming across this UR and SPI specification that you're really unsure about, because I certainly was, and I found it very confusing. So as I said, hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.